Hi guys, it's Alyssa from Planet Alyssa, and I am here with a very basic video. So for those of you that are already listing items on Etsy, you probably don't need this video. Um, but if you're not familiar with Etsy and you're looking to get started listing listing any items, but in particular vintage items on Etsy, uh, this video is just sort of a step-by-step -step guide on how to create an Etsy listing. And what I'm going to do is just walk you through the different steps I take when I list an item. Now, I'm going to do all this with um, a single item. Um, I have this vintage planter, which you can't see because the sun's shining on it, but um, we're going to just use this item to, to show you the different steps involved. What I will say, though, is when I do my Etsy listings, when I do all the things I'm going to show you in this video, I do it in batches. So I will, you know, when I'm writing up my descriptions, I'm going to write up descriptions of like 10 different items or whatever at one time. Um, when I'm taking photos, I'm going to take photos of a whole bunch of stuff at one time. And um, when I list stuff, um, again, I'm going to be probably listing a few different items at one time. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to do this all with a single item just to show you how it works. So what I actually do, and it's not necessary to do this, but I have a system in place and that helps me a lot. And part of my system is I actually write up all the information about the item before I actually list it. So I'll have a notebook. It just is a plain old notebook and it's going to have all the information about the item. Um, at the top, I'll put the title. You can't see it because the sun's glaring on it. Um, I'll put a description here. Um, I'll make sure I have measurements of the item. And because I use Etsy shipping profiles, I'll have um, what size package I'm going to be using to ship it. And that is something that I'll do. Um, I'll do a bunch of these at one time, usually while I'm sitting in front of the television. So it's, you know, kind of vegging out a little bit, but also working um, and getting some work done. And that's like one way I can uh, keep up on television shows without feeling too guilty about it because I'm actually doing work at the same time. So, you know, I'll, I'll take off any price stickers. This had a price sticker on it because it came from a thrift store. And I'll do my best to write up a description that matches the item, um, say as much as I can about it. Even though I'm going to have pictures of the item, um, I also describe it in words because A, that'll help with your uh, search engine, um, you know, search engines finding your item. And also some people prefer to see a written out description as opposed to looking at pictures. Some people are not as visual as others, so they want to know more about it or they can't tell from the picture um, exactly what they're looking at. So I would be as descriptive as I possibly can, explain the colors, the textures. Um, definitely want to include the size, um, have a tape measure handy when you're writing up descriptions or creating descriptions um, so that you can say it's, you know, this many inches tall, this many inches wide, that sort of thing. Um, if you are like me and have bad eyesight, you might want to have either a magnifying glass or some reading glasses handy so you can read things like the small little stickers or maker's marks on the bottom of items. So that is step one for me um, in how I list my items is actually writing down a description. And what I'll do is I'll just fill up these notebooks. Um, I'll have a notebook handy next to the computer. Um, and then when it's time for me to actually list items on Etsy, I'll have this. But then the next step is to actually get pictures of the item, to take photos of the item. So I will do that next. So I've got it already in my photo cube here, which is a mess and dirty. And I've got my lighting all set up. It's a nice, bright, sunny day, so it's perfect for taking photos. I did do a much longer uh, video on taking photos um, for Etsy. So if you want some more details on how I go about taking pictures of my items, uh, check that out. I'll leave a uh, link in the, uh, in the description below. Maybe try to include a link here, but uh, I'm not always good at doing that. But we'll see if I can. Anyway, uh, so I have my trusty camera here, and I am going to take a picture of the item. I'm actually going to take several pictures of the item. First step, turn the camera on. Um, right now, I am taking a bunch of pictures, but um, again, I'm just focusing on the one item that we're working on right now. So here's what I'm looking at through my camera right now. Um, so we're going to take a picture like that. We're going to try to get one of it straight on. We're also going to want to take pictures of it from different angles. So we want to get the back side of the item, which looks like that. And get the camera strap out of the way. Um, so something like that. 
The inside is a little bit dirty, which I mentioned in my description. So we're going to try to get a picture of the inside too. We want to get the bottom, which does have that maker sticker on it. And then we also want a picture that's going to show size relevance. So here's my handy dandy apple, which I'm going to stick next to it right here. And we're going to take a picture with the apple. And then, of course, we want to get at least one close up picture, especially because this has such a neat texture with the flowers there. Um, so put my camera to macro and um, and try to get a picture that kind of gets the close up view there of our flower pot. OK, the next step, which I almost left out, is putting the item away. Seems like a weird thing to include in a video, but one thing that I have learned is that it's helpful to label your shelves um, where you store your inventory so that you can easily find it once you sell an item and you don't have to hunt for it. Now, I know you're thinking, okay, you're just starting out, you have less than 100 items, you probably don't need to label your shelves right now, but I would strongly suggest starting it now because it's much easier to do this from the beginning than to have to go back and label all your shelves, write down where everything is. It's much easier to do it as you're putting items away. So I'm going to find a spot on the shelf and mark down where I put this. And it's pretty crowded up here, so let's see where I can find a spot. But it looks like there's an opening right here. Um, maybe not. Maybe not quite big enough. Hmm. Okay, I do see a spot down here. I don't know if we can even see it. It's so dark in here. But um, this is shelf G, and that is G4 as a shelf. So I'm going to mark that down on my page where I wrote the listing. And it's just going to look something like that. I have gone ahead and imported my photos into my computer, and it's time to edit them. Although the first thing is I have to narrow them down, because you can see I have seven photos here of this item, and on Etsy we can only use five photos per item. So I've got to pick the best ones and um, that show the most different things. I mean, I want to show the inside. I know that obviously um, I want one photo that's going to be my main picture. I'd love to show the back of the item too. I want something that shows size relevance. And so really I can get rid of this one right away. Um, it's kind of like a duplicate of this and I like this one better. So I'm just going to throw that in the trash. Now I got to decide which of these are going to go. Um, really, I'm deciding, I think, between this one, which shows the bottom and that sticker on the bottom, and this one that shows more close up. And I think I'm going to get rid of the one that shows the bottom. Um, I like it. I'd love to include it, but I don't think it's quite as important as the others. So that's going to go in the trash. And then I'm going to go ahead and edit the pictures. Again, in my photo video, I go into a lot more detail about how to edit the photos that you're going to use on Etsy. Um, in general, you want to keep in mind that Etsy's thumbnail picture, the, the picture that shows up in your store, um, if your item gets included in a treasury, whatever, is going to be square. Um, and all cameras that I know take rectangular photos. So you definitely want to have a square shape. Um, you want things to be straight. Notice how crooked this picture is. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten it out. And um, then I'm going to crop it to a square shape so that it looks nice um, in my Etsy store. You know, the thumbnail picture, anywhere that Etsy's going to use a picture, it's going to be square. Um, so something about like that would be good, square and centered, more or less centered. Um, and then I want to lighten it up. That's a real big key. Um, when you're listing photos, when you're listing items, you want them to look as good as you can, as professional as you can, and lightening them up. Uh, helps a lot. That's a little bit too light, Alyssa. But um, yeah, find a nice balance. Clean up anything. I got some uh, shadows here that I might try to clean up. And um, yeah, then we're going to go on to the next step. Okay, so I've edited my pictures and now what I'm going to do is actually drag them into a folder that I have always on my desktop called Etsy. And that's just where I keep my Etsy pictures. Um, this makes it a lot easier for me when I'm listing items to find the pictures I need and just easily upload them. So I'm just going to select all these and drag them over to the Etsy folder here. I'm going to try to see if anyone else has a DN, as the company's called, 
uh, vintage planter for sale. So let's see if anyone else is selling any on Etsy. I usually start with Etsy when I'm doing my research and then maybe move on to eBay and other sites. And so now we're going to see some others. We've got, whoops, where they go? Um, we've got this one here that's pretty cute with an elephant. They're only charging $8, which doesn't, which doesn't seem like quite enough money to me. But we got one here that's going for $12. It's got a, a nursery theme, old train there. Um, and then we got this pretty flowered one, uh, which is going for $14. And so kind of the, the median range here, I guess, is maybe about $12. And so that sounds like a good price for mine. That's what I think I'm going to price it at. Now sometimes I do this research um, as I'm writing up the descriptions, other times I do it right before I'm going to list an item. Um, this is something where I don't really have a, a set process for listing, um, for doing the research. But um, anyway, um, so I just marked $12 down on my little handy dandy written out description. And now let's go ahead and actually list the item. So to do that, we're going to go to the Your Shop thing, um, and in the quick links, we have Add a Listing right here. So let's click that. That's going to bring up the Etsy listing page, which looks like this. Um, you see we have the photos there. Um, here's the listing details, the title. Um, now we got to give some information about it here. We got to choose a Etsy category for it. We set our price, our quantity, almost always going to be one when we're doing vintage items, unless you do have multiple of an item. Um, we're going to put our description here. We're going to put our shop section. This is our, our own section that we have created in our store for the item. Um, we're probably not going to have variations. That's usually when you're doing handmade items. Um, and you can either use the calculated shipping by entering the weight and size, or you can use shipping profiles, which is what I'm going to do. And then down here, um, we're going to have our search terms, so the tags that we're going to use, um, any materials that the item is made up out of, usually more useful for handmade items, but I do try to include the materials if I know it. Um, occasion, this item doesn't really have a specific occasion. Uh, style, again, maybe it's kitschy, but that's about all I would say for style. Um, recipient, really not a um, gender-specific, age-specific kind of item, but sometimes you are going to have items where you're going to want to put in the recipient. Um, so we're going to go back up to the top, and the first thing we're going to do is add our photos. So we're going to click here. And because I have that folder set up on my desktop called Etsy, um, I'm going to open that and here's the five photos. Um, normally I would have these labeled and because I'd have other photos in here, but because I'm just doing this right now, I just have these five. Um, if I hold the shift key down and select each of them, it'll upload them all at once. And so I'm going to choose and it's going to upload our five photos. Um, so while that's going, I can scroll down here and start typing in the title. And this, because I already have it written up, I'm just going to type what I wrote here, which is, well, if I type it right, um, vintage ceramic planter in yellow and green with cute little girl illustration. It's hard for me to type and talk at the same time. Um, D and Japan. And what I'm also going to put up here is G4. Whoops. Um, which is the shelf that is on upstairs in my uh, in my attic where I store items. Um, the customer doesn't need to know that, but when it, the item does sell, I will have that um, printed out on my packing list. It'll come up, you know, so I know where to find the item. Um, so we could just see how our, our photos uploaded here. Um, this is the one I'm going to use for the main photo, so that should be there. Um, if I want to use one of these other ones there, I would just click it and drag it over there and it would put that there. Um, but I want this one as the main one. I probably want this one as the second one because that shows the back of it. And then these show more specific um, parts of it. Now we got the about this listing section. Um, so first of all, who made it? Well, I didn't make it. It's not a handmade item, so it's almost always going to be another company or person. In fact, I think it's always going to be if you're doing vintage. Um, what is it? Um, unless you are selling vintage kits, like vintage sewing kits, which I do sometimes, or vintage patterns, um, it's a finished product. And then when was it made? Um, now this, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, they break it down by decades here. I'm not sure when it was made. I'm going to guess 1960s, but it could have very well been 1970s. I'm not sure. 
um, category. Now we do have to select a category for it. Um, and so these are all the, the main headings. I think this was going to come under home and living. And then I'm going to have to find out where planters are. Um, I'm going to guess under home decor. And let's see. Well, I don't see it here. So let me go back. Let's see. It's not really an, I mean, outdoor and gardening, it is a planter, but it's not really an outdoor one. But let's just see if planters come up under outdoor and gardening, planters and pots. So I guess I'm going to put it there, um, indoor planters. There we go. Now the price, like I said, we researched it, so we decided $12 sounds like a good price, and that's what we're going to put in. We have our quantity of one. Um, here you have your renewal options. I set this to manual. If you set this to automatic, that means when the item expires, it's automatically going to renew and charge you 20 cents. I'd rather do this myself um, in case, you know, I want to not list an item anymore. I don't want to pay to relist it if I'm going to get rid of it, um, so I like to keep that on manual. Um, if you're selling vintage items, it's a physical object. Uh, digital is only if you're selling handmade items and you're selling like digital artwork or digital templates or something like that. Okay, description. And this is where I'm going to put the description that I wrote out ahead of time and all I have to do is type it up. Um, I'm probably just going to type it up and not talk as I type because I apparently can't type and talk at the same time. Okay, and just to kind of go over, um, I try to explain, first of all, in the first sentence, what exactly it is. This is a pretty vintage ceramic planter from DN Imports, and that was made in Japan. Um, this round ceramic planter is painted a bright yellow with spring green colored trim. They can see all this in the picture, but it's still a good idea just to put this into words for people. Uh, the planter is illustrated with pretty flowers and a cute baby girl in a pink bonnet. Um, so I think those are all the relevant details. Um, condition, this planter has some dirt marks inside, but overall is in very nice condition. There's no chips or cracks or anything. In fact, I'm going to put that in here. And uh, then I do have the dimensions for it. So the planter measures three and, three and a half inches tall and is five inches wide. And that's really all we need. Um, some you're going to go into a little bit more detail. Um, if it, in your research you find out more about an item, you might want to include that in your description too. Um, now the shop section. Um, I have my shop section broken up into for your kitchen, for your room, for your office, for your collection, uh, clothing and accessories, toys and games, stationery and paper, books and media, sewing kits and patterns, and holiday items, at least right now. Um, so you're going to want to pick the selection that best the section of your store that best fits it. For me, I'm going to say that's for your room. Um, so that's what I'm going to put there. No variation, like I said. Um, this is where you would use, if you're using the calculated shipping, you would put in the weight um, and size. I don't bother with that. I know that this item is probably going to go in a 7-inch cube um, post office priority mailbox, one of those free boxes. Um, and that it's going to weigh probably about a pound or so um, when it's all backed up. It's a little bit too heavy to go first class. So it's going to be just over the first class mark, I think. And so that's probably going to cost about 5 or $6. Um, so I have a shipping profile set up that I call 4-inch box, even though it's not a 4-inch box. It's like a 7-inch box. Don't ask. I've had it like that forever. And... Um, that's about the right weight. So for the US, it's $5.95 or $3 with another item. Um, and then it goes up from there for the international, 12 for Canada, 17 for Mexico, and 19 for everywhere else. Um, with Canada, Mexico, and everywhere else, I'm going to send it first class international and not priority mail international, which is hugely expensive. And then it is time for tags. Anyway, um, I have that all set up as a shipping profile. Did I say that? So that's why it, it automatically populated all those fields. So if you want to save, save time, um, that's one thing you can do is just set up some shipping profiles. It's not going to be exact. Um, if someone really close to me orders something, it might cost a little less than $5.95. If they're in California and they order something, it might cost a little more than that. Um, but I sell so many items that it all balances out. Okay, tags. Um, and so this is where we're going to try to think of 
things people might search for as they're looking for the item. I don't write this up ahead of time, so I just kind of make this up as I'm listing an item. Uh, sometimes I go back and change things if I see that that's kind of a weird tag, but um, we're going to try Vintage Planter. Um, we're going to say bright yellow because it really is. Um, we'll put spring green too because it has that spring green colored trim. Uh, we're going to put illustrated planter, maybe ceramic uh, flower pot if that will fit. It does fit. Um, we only have so many characters left um, when we're doing tags, so can't make them too long. And you get 13 tags for each listing. I would recommend using as many as you can. Um, we want to put the company, oh, we can't put a, a hyphen there, but we can put DN Imports, we can put Made in Japan, um, we're going to put Flower Design, we're going to put Baby Girl because it is a baby girl in the pink bonnet, um, and I may even put pink bonnet in, list, in case somebody's looking for this exact planter like they had it when they were a kid. Um, what else would I look for? Um, think that somebody would look for? And um, I'm not sure. Maybe I, I noticed that one did say nursery. Um, and that's not how you spell nursery. So yeah, check your spellings when you do this because I am always misspelling stuff. Um, I type so fast sometimes that I type quicker than, um, than I'm thinking or something. So nursery theme maybe. Um, yeah. And we're going to put kitschy style because it kind of is. And um, yeah, I don't know. You can pick whatever you want to pick. That's all I can think of right now. Um, ingredients. I would call this ceramic. Okay. And um, not really an occasion. I'm going to select kitsch, I think is the style here. Yes. Um, so I'm going to select that. And that's it, guys. That's really all we have to put. You could just leave recipient blank unless there's something like if it's specifically like a woman's, uh, you know, pair of sunglasses, I would, you know, put women. Um, but this isn't really specific. I mean, it's got the baby girl on it, but it's not really, you know, meant for baby girls. It could be for anyone. So that's it. And I'm going to click publish. And um, this pops up. It says it'll be a non-refundable 20 cents. And by clicking publish, you agree to pay this fee. So uh, let's go for it. And now my listing is active. Um, not too bad, guys. Uh, if you want, you can hit this button. It's called Share, and it gives you the option of sharing it. If you have a Facebook account where you share things or Twitter. Um, I do have Twitter and Facebook. I don't usually share items there. I do have a Pinterest account. I don't know if anybody uh, looks at it and, you know, buys stuff as a result. But um, the phone's ringing. But anyway, I'm going to pin it. Okay, where was I? I got interrupted by the phone. But anyway, so I shared that on Pinterest. I don't know if it does anything. Um, so I'm done. Um, you could list another item, whatever. Um, if you want to see your shop, well, you can view your listing on Etsy um, here. And this just shows you what it looks like when a customer clicks on it. And um, something like that, it has recommended items over there. I don't know how they determine what else they recommend. Um, you could also see your shop. You can view your shop and see how it looks in the store. Um, so these are my, my featured items, so those come up on top. I haven't changed those in a while. I probably should. Um, but there it is. That's the most recent item I've listed, so it's going to be in that spot right there. So guys, that's really it. That's all that goes into listing an item on Etsy. It's not that complicated. I know if you're just starting, it seems like a lot, but um, once you start doing this, it's pretty easy to figure out and you'll get a system and a rhythm going and it'll go pretty smoothly for you. So uh, yeah, that's it everyone. Thank you for watching. I do put out other vid videos on Etsy, showing the different items I've sold, and other videos on selling online, um, selling on Amazon, and well, I don't really sell much on eBay. But anyway, if you're interested, please subscribe to the channel or uh, click the like button or leave a comment below. Okay, guys, I'll see you again soon.